So we're bringing you a little bit of a different video today. Today's video is going to be a discussion. It's going to be kind of open-ended for interpretation, but the topic is all about the Pope and Young organization and the fair chase laws or bylaws set forth to actually have book entries. You know, a lot of this stuff is open to interpretation. A lot of it is kind of open-ended and there's really no enforcing factor or entity to really enforce a lot of this stuff. As you know, if you have any book entries, there's an affidavit or a form to fill out where you're signing off on, you know, specific information. And part of that specific information is that you are following these fair chase bylaws. But at the end of the day, there's really no um, way to enforce or to know what actually went on with that harvest other than, you know, taking someone's word and um, honoring what they've submitted in that affidavit. But before we get into this topic, I want to know all of your thoughts and feelings on the Pope and Young organization and their bylaws. So in the comments below, give us a few words of what you guys uh, think and feel about the Pope and Young organization, what they've done in the past, and what they're doing moving forward. So to really get dive into this topic, of course it's going to be about trail cameras. We're a trail camera manufacturer, and one of the reasons we want to discuss this topic is several months ago, the Pope and Young organization took a clear stance on the use of cellular trail cameras and fair chase, deeming any animal that has ever taken or walked in front of a cellular trail camera and had that information or that data transmitted wirelessly is now void or not legally able to be entered as a book buck. So if you guys have not seen that, if you have not read that, that specific statement is on uh, www.popeandyoung.org. You can find that on their website. But let's get into some of the fair chase laws and look at specifically the use for electronic devices because I think the stance that they took against the use of cellular trail cameras um, was probably a little bit shocking to some, but when you really look at the fair chase bylaws and how it's written, it's written towards electronic devices and is really open-ended with um, no specifics really spelled out. So let's look at that right now. I'm gonna read you word for word what is found, and we have a screenshot here, so you'll see this, you'll see a, a screen grab of this, but word for word, the specific fair chase law for electronic devices states this on popeandyoung.org. By the use of electronic devices for attracting, locating, or pursuing game, or guiding the hunter to such game, or the use of a bow or arrow to which any electronic device is attached with the exception of lighted knocks and recording devices that cast no light towards the target and do not age, aid in rage finding, sighting, or shooting the bow. So again, there are several terms in there that are left to interpretation, and this is really, really, really open-ended. And the thing that specifically you want to look at is electronic devices. So just using that broad term, electronic devices, that's going to categorize two-way radios. That's going to categorize the use of cell phones, texting, calling, that's going to categorize any trail camera, not just cellular or wireless trail cameras, but that's, that's any trail camera, which brings in a really valid argument here. So prior to their statement against the use of wireless trail cameras, this statement has been in place for many, many years in their fair chase bylaws. So it becomes, I guess, these points start to become a little bit contradicting because the use of electronic device, a, a regular trail camera, having that photo of that deer taken, knowing that that photo is aiding you in that hunt or aiding you in locating that animal, according to that bylaw, makes that, that harvest not eligible for entry. But yet, over the last 20 years of digital trail cameras, there have been countless animals with their picture taken on a regular SD card, standard trail camera and then allowed to be entered into the book so again this is um you know we're not taking really sides here we've actually supported the pope and young organization 
with some of the custom cameras um, and donations in the last couple of years that we've done uh, the same the same thing with Boone and Crockett and several other uh, conservation agencies. And I think the Pope and Young organization does a lot of good things for bow hunting, but I almost feel that the fair chase laws really need to be more specific and more defined in where they're taking a stance because it, there's so there's so much open endedness in just the terms and the verbiage of of these bylaws without someone going in and doing extensive legal research there is no answer here so again going back to this statement it's attracting locating or pursuing game or guiding a hunter to such game so again with that statement that makes all trail cameras or any photo of a specific deer taken by a trail camera not eligible to be entered by the books but again, there's no enforcing agency. There's no enforcement policy here. It all relies on the honesty of you filling out your affidavit uh, to get that buck entered into the books. So again, this is just an open-ended conversation here, but we wanted to shed some light on that specific topic. We know cell cameras have been, uh, they're tearing the market apart. It's a, it's a craze. Everybody wants them and for good reason. Um, as you know, a lot of our other videos, a lot of the in content now is getting geared towards wireless ca cameras or uh, cellular trail cameras specific, because that's what everybody wants. Everybody wants to use that. But there's a lot of people that do not understand some of these fair chase bylaws of the Pope and Young and that specific statement made geared towards cellular or wireless trail cameras. And that is any photo of a specific animal that has been transmitted wirelessly, wirelessly. So that could be Wi-Fi, that could be Bluetooth, or that could be cellular, makes the harvest of that animal void to be entered into the books. And, you know, as far as we know, there's not a whole lot of people talking about this. There's not a lot of um, light being shed to it. Um, we've actually reached out to Pope and Young and the Boone and Crockett organization uh, this year to have them on our podcast and we're hoping to get to get them on in the next few months um, so they can voice their opinion and voice their stance on the situation. But again, uh, we want to shed some light on this for all of you out there. It's November and, you know, there's a lot of bucks hitting the dirt, a lot of bucks dropping. And a lot of you guys are going to want to enter these uh, these harvests in, in books, in, whether it's Pope and Young or the Boone and Crockett. And we felt like there was some needed clarity or for someone to step up and shed some light on the situation. So again, um, if you guys have any thoughts about Pope and Young, leave them in the comments below, whether you agree or disagree, what you think about um, the, the fair chase law or chair, fair chase regulations um, in regards to electronic devices and all the other regulations. So we're interested to hear your thoughts that way when we get this podcast scheduled and um, continue to dive in, and create this content for you guys, we can tackle specific topics or answer specific questions that you guys have. So uh, we appreciate the support. Give us a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button.